On PM Express tonight, it's a major story has been trending over the last few days. This bombshell report by Professor Fimpon Bating, who used to be the Minister for Environment and chair the Interministerial Committee on Illegal Mining. There's been a lot said about it. Tonight, there's some action finally. Shraj has confirmed they received the report. Uh, a petition that they are going to be looking into. They are going to be looking into to establish a prima facie matter and then determine if they should go forward or not. Tonight, we're going to look at, so what action could really come out of this? This is not the first time we've heard allegations, counter-allegations, as far as politically exposed individuals are concerned in the, in the fight or engage in the actual garamsi or illegal mining. This is the first time, however, that we're hearing from a former minister, a man who chaired a, an interministerial committee that the president himself put together. So how much weight should we put on what Professor Fimpong Bating had said? But most importantly, what should happen on the back of this? And would anything change from everything else that we've heard? I'm bringing in the guests who understand this. Uh, Dr. Ken Ashibe will join us. He is, of course, a convener of the, uh, the media coalition against illegal mining. We will talk to a former secretary of the Interministerial Committee on Illegal Mining as well. Uh, Charles Bissou will join us. And then we'll also bring in the ranking on the Mines and Energy Committee for a conversation. Please stay with me after this. Take as little as three minutes to see if you could save on motorcycle insurance with Progressive. Come on, you've spent more time than that debating your accessories. Could use some new riding gloves. Guess I'll go with black leather again. Ah, it just seems so basic. Wait, what if I did white leather? People be like, hey, this guy's different. Or they might be like, hey, this guy looks like a butler. Yeah, okay. Black leather it is. Get a quote in as little as three minutes at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. This is the smell of the leftover tuna fish sandwich you left in your lunchbox over the weekend in a wimpy trash bag. Wimpy, wimpy, wimpy! <sighs> Blech! And this is the smell of that same sandwich in a hefty, ultra-strong trash bag. Hefty, hefty, hefty! <sighs> Ah, smell the difference? Hefty Ultra Strong has Arm & Hammer with continuous odor control, so no matter what's inside your trash, hmm, you can stay one step ahead of Stinky. And for bigger jobs, try the superior strength of Hefty Large Black Bags. The Venture X card from Capital One gives you premium travel benefits. Perfect for seeing Taylor Swift The Eras Tour. Presented by Capital One. Oh, I do love her. Earn five times miles on flights. And 10 times miles on hotels through Capital One Travel. Enjoy your stay in Suite 13. Whoa, 13? That's Taylor's lucky number. The Venture X card from Capital One. What's in your wallet? Terms apply. See CapitalOne.com for details. 92% of households that join Peloton early in the year are still active a year later. Yeah, if you like cycling to EDM. Not just EDM. Try cycling to Broadway hits, take a scenic hike in Iceland on our treadmill, or row to some 80s jams. Because I have so much free time. Whether you have 30 minutes or just five, Peloton can fit any schedule. 92% stick with it. So can you. Try Peloton tread, row, or bikes risk-free with a 30-day home trial. New members only. Not available in remote locations. See additional terms at onepeloton.com slash home dash trial. And he tee up someone in red, and he goes to the oh! oh You're know what to do. I be the real good. Sam, what's the real good? The left magician. The left magician. Who is the good? Ghana Jollof or Nigeria Jollof? Ghana Jollof has no co-equal. The smell alone. Mm. Oh my God. Oh, that shit. You took a lie, eh? Now they say you when they use Google Lens and then they go put them for talk. Oh, hey! You want me? Ghana Jollof. Are you with me? Forget everybody. Yeah. My guy. Put some respect on the goat. On the goat. The only goat I know lives in Tama. Every year, we will give to you back to back. Ba, 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 ba. We are talking about piety. I want to hear the answer first. Let's be the goat, huh? My guy, him be the goat. <laughs> 
our choice of goats may differ in football, music, and jollof. Alumu Bitters always brings us together. Alumu experience greatness in every moment. Drink responsibly. Not for sale to persons under 18 and recommended to pregnant women. This advert is FDA approved. The joy of every Tyler is using the ideal tile adhesive for a lasting bonding. It is for this reason that Tylers and builders always use Weber Cork tile adhesives. They know that Weber Cork tile adhesives are of European quality and produced locally by St. Gobain Weber Ghana. They know that Weber Cork tile adhesives have all the additives and chemicals and all you need is water. They know that Weber Cork tile adhesives are what you use for indoor, outdoor and swimming pools. And they know that if they have to tile right and tile once, then it is Weber Cork tile adhesives. Weber Cork tile adhesives are available at major outlets like City. Ceramica, Interstar Ceramics, Skyview Express, Atala Limited, Antis Limited, Rafa Depot, Tago Cantamanto and Coforidia, and an outlet near you for retailing and your project call 0556 486 342. Weber, we care. Every day, people have money emergencies. Ma, I need my school fees emergency. Ma, my job money emergency. Emergency, emergency. Catch it. Have your rent. Emergency. Now, there's a new emergency number in town. More money, more money, challenge and enjoyment. At the top life we got. Dial star 770 hash for all your money emergencies in trouble life. Dial star 770 hash for money emergencies and get easy and quick access to your money, loans, and other banking needs. Echo Bank, the Pan African Bank. Crystal clear and thrilling podcast and live shows. Download and listen to us on Apple, Spotify, TuneIn, Google Podcasts, MyJoy Online, Amazon services like Echo, Amazon Music, and Audible, Stitcher, Adam Online, Overcast, and Pandora. Take note of everything. Sign up for the multimedia digital platforms now to stay updated. My name is C. I'm a person living with HIV. I got to know of my HIV status when I became pregnant. Since then, I have successfully been delivered of an HIV negative baby. Thanks to PMTCT services. I follow the guidelines and take my HIV medicine core ARVs every day to date. This makes me strong, healthy, and prevents me from passing HIV onto my baby. Please avail yourself for PMTCT services when pregnant. It is the only way to ensure that you do not transmit HIV onto your baby during pregnancy, birth, and breastfeeding. Even if you have tested for HIV recently and was negative, test again when pregnant. If you test positive, take the baby back to the hospital immediately after birth, as directed by your healthcare provider. The baby will also be given medicine immediately after birth and tested to ensure that both mother and baby are well. Let's work together to have a generation free of HIV. Our children must be free to shine. All of a sudden, my voice is different. And we need to try a call. <laughs> uh, Bama, bring me the honey whiskey. You know the one? Black Rock Whiskey. Honey Whiskey. Shale, honey near their frau. Black Rock Whiskey is strong. Now she tastes me as smooth. And it goes down easy. Uh, excuse me. Mm. <laughs> Bama. <laughs> Bama, bring my 
friend one black rock whiskey black rock whiskey blended with natural honey flavor hey what's up mama hey what the over you can turn sada you been to mama no me the black rock whiskey can be a feeling smooth that's no drink responsibly not for sale to persons under 18 years of age and not recommended for pregnant women. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the FDA. Mothers go above and beyond to give us five times the love. Tell us how much your mom means to you and let HD Plus make it feel like five times the star this Mother's Day. From 13th April to 1st May 2023, record and send a 30 second video about how amazing your mom is. Feely, feely to the WhatsApp number 020 The video will compete with other entries to win one of the 65 inch NASCO flash screen TVs with an HD Plus model for mom. HD Plus, the feely. have joined us now in the studio with me is a former secretary to the interministerial uh, committee on illegal mining against illegal mining charles bisu is with me in the studio uh, also joining us uh, on zoom right now is uh, dr ken ashibe and dr ken ashibe is the convener of the media coalition against illegal mining will be joined by the ranking member on the mines and energy committee who is John Ginapo. And remember that a minority have stated that they will, once Parliament resumes, be pushing for a, a bipartisan probe into the allegations made by Professor Frimpon Boate. As of tonight, another minority member of Parliament for South Dai, Roxin Nelson Dafiamekbo, has filed a petition with the Commission on Human Rights and Administrative Justice. Shard has confirmed, in, when he spoke to me on Top Story, the Strat Commissioner himself, uh, Mr. Joseph Votel, that they have received it and they are giving it attention. They are, they've already opened a preliminary probe into this to establish a prima facie case beyond which they can de- decide whether to open a full-scale probe or not. So there is some movement on these matters. But let me bring in Ken Ashim. I don't want to bore you with the details because I'm pretty sure you possibly have heard a lot already if you're watching us tonight on this particular subject and and so let's get straight to what we've learned um Mr. Shibin, so let me let me ask you i mean from we spoke last week about this when this thing first emerged we've seen the various developments professor Primpon Boating has had cause to write two separate rebuttals in which he discloses even more detail the one regulating to gabriel sarichardako and then kodio ponkrumah and then now today, as I've just been intimating, Shrat has received some uh, a petition. The NDC at the press conference also won the special prosecutor to get involved. Give me your reaction to what, what has transpired since this story broke with the leakage of this report. Well, th- thank you very much, Evans, and uh, uh, good evening to my brother in the studio, and as well as your viewers. Uh, I think I'm still disappointed, you know. I'm not too sure, as a country, we are taking these issues as seriously as they ought to be. You know, this is somebody from the belly of the whale, uh, you know, who has made very, you know, major uh, revelations and... You know, we, we've not really seen any movement uh, to, to this particular one. And apart from Parliament that we've heard from, you know, the CSOs, um, you know, we've not heard anything from all of them. They're taking too long, you know, to respond. And if you look at some of the current data uh, from the theater of the illegality, it's, you know, the impunity is continuing. Uh, I've, I've chanced upon some report on uh, uh, the uh, the water quality in the Ancobra mm-hmm. and the level of heavy metals that are in that. There are two patients that I know, one that is dead, one that is still in the hospital, and the level of heavy metals that are in their blood. You know about the reports that came from, you know, about uh, disfigured babies and yeah. all of that. 
and the fact that even our water body is threatened. So I think that we need to be a lot more angrier as a country so far as this particular, uh, you know, canker of uh, uh, the, the illegal mining is concerned. Uh, you know, this is a report that is about, what, two years old, and, you know, we've not seen any action from the executive. Thank God uh, Sharj has said that, you know, they are going to deal with this. I am always also hoping that by this time, uh, the special prosecutor, and then the, the lawyers need to correct me, uh, whether he could not also have taken, you know, on his own volition. I don't know whether he needs somebody to petition him before he acts, but definitely in that report uh, that has been put out, there are corruption and corruption-related activities in there. And so you're hoping that some action, uh, you know, would also have been taken uh, from that particular score. But I'm, you know, I think it's fair game for those who have been named you know, to issue the rebuttals. And I'm happy that uh, the professor is also responding to all of it. But you see, this would only be settled when we actually have some proper, independent, you know, very inclusive investigations. Yeah, I mean, please stay with me. You, I think you've just scratched the surface of something pretty significant. And I took notice of the fact that you, you made a point that the civil society groups themselves have largely been silent on this very explosive report maybe people are fatigued um, by all these because people knew this was happening and people have sort of, sort of get to the point that nothing really happened about this. We just play political football with it and let it go. So stay with me. We'll come and interrogate that in greater detail. But let me come to um, Mr. Bishop. Mr. Bishop, I wanted to drill down to some of the specifics because you were once, one time a secretary. You, Prempon Barton, was your boss. One of the most alarming aspects of the report had to do with the activities of the uh, CNG Aleska mm-hmm. and Imperial uh, yeah. Heritage. The reason why I'm isolating that, we actually, here at Joy News, had actually witnessed this firsthand. Your, your team took us there yeah. to one of the raids. Yeah. And my colleague, um, Iras Sari Donko, captured all this on tape. In fact, when they got in there, the very fascinating report, they got in there with your team, empowered by the president, and they, got, and they found soldiers mm-hmm. who had also been sent there yeah. to protect the mine that was doing illegal mining. Mm-hmm. An officer of them called a person, and this was on loudspeakers, so you could hear the you know, senior officer on the other line ordering them. They actually eventually overpowered your, your team. We know that's the uh, company. No, that, that was after. I that was, yeah, that was, that was after there's you. There's been other uh, raids yeah. as well. Uh, you also led one raid. Yeah, yes. uh, oh, and this is the same company that uh, Gabriel Sedraco had now said he used to be a, a lawyer for mm-hmm. and had called the minister. What do you know about, about the activities in the forest reserves and the extent of destruction? Because that seemed to be one of the most serious sticking points in this report. Okay, thank you, and good evening to your listeners and um, Dr. Kenashibe. And then I think you said um, John Ginapo is also joining. Yes. Okay, I I think, I mean, during the time of the IMCIM, we did a lot of work together. And some, I think the job that Ken did was good because he kept us on our toes. He was coming from a divergent view and all the time. And it's good to recollect that there was was a groundswell of support. Mm -hmm. That, the kind we haven't seen exactly. before in 2017, 2018. Exactly. The entire media organization mm-hmm. was marshaled in That's support right. of that effort that the president launched. Exactly. So, I mean, so, I mean at that time, so you, could, you could realize that the, uh, you would realize that the, um, the international committee was very vibrant because you had people uh, looking up, I mean, into what we're doing. Now, um, I am also disappointed, first of all, in Professor from Paul Martin. Why? Um, because th- things that, um, and my question is that, would he have come out, to, um, or this report, I'm not sure if he was the one who leaked it, would he have done it if he was still a minister? And the things that... But I, of course we're not sure he leaked it, then that becomes a moot point, is it not? Because but this, it's, not, it's not moot. Co- I mean, considering that no. this was with the president since 2021, so it wouldn't be the nobody knows who exactly leaked it, but it's become uh-huh. a public so, so the point I'm trying to make is that, yes... Um, during the time that he was the chairman, mm. um, he could have dealt with these issues. Um, I think most of them were done. I mean, the report itself, um, the substantive part is correct. 
Okay. The substantive part is correct. Yes. Okay. But what I, the reason why I'm disappointed in him is that um, he also had people working for him. So I'm looking at a country where we all want good things for ourselves. Yeah. And then we actually um, hide behind the cloak of actually having that credibility capital. Mm -hmm. And the masses are not aware of what we do. And then behind the screens, we do things to actually um, the downtrodden. Now, I'm also disappointed in uh, Kwekubaku. What has he done? Okay, so I'm, I'm going to enumerate all that. Because we, if we're building a country and things that we want to do that need, um, we want them to ignore to the benefit of this country, then whatever we say, we must actually adhere to them. And then um, I'm not privy to the conversation between Gabi and Professor from Bombarton. The names that he's mentioned in there, that's why I'm saying that I'm disappointed in because if it was, we're mentioning people who are doing that, I do not know the names that he mentioned that they were doing. He should have mentioned the people that he's been working with because it's all led to a point where um, the intervention committee was bastardized. Now, I'll give you a chronology of events. You see, um, CNG Alaska, yeah. um, the directors of CNG Alaska, Star Point, Heritage Imperial, they are all the same people. Who are they? And I mentioned, I think in 2018, when I was the secretary of the committee, I mentioned one Donald and Chair. And then I mentioned yeah, his that, name is in the report. Yes, yes. So I'm not going to talk, mention names outside of the report. Mm -hmm. I'm going to mention names within the report because then I was the secretary and I knew the things that were going on. And we, I, I, I remember I granted an interview to a radio station. I said, these companies are exploiting the country because within that country we have a company called Star um, Unique Star Point. Okay, in that proper forest, a Unique Star Point. I think in 2017, December, applies for reclamation license. Okay. Okay. And then for mined out areas. And then in 2018, Heritage Imperial applies for what? Prospecting license on the same concession. So what are we doing to this country? So we, um, when Kwekubaku called Prof, I am privy to that because Prof informed me as a secretary that he had a call from Kwekubaku and that um, Kwekubaku is saying that each, each time they go to cabinet, he prof seemed to be hard on CNG Alaska and um, Heritage Imperial, and that he would, they are his friends, and that he would want them to come and see him. I think they arranged 4 p.m. the next day or something like that. I had traveled to, um, I, I traveled out of Accra, and they went to meet them. When they went to see him, the documentation that they brought, prospecting licenses, and paid the drone footages that we have for the areas, CNG, Alaska, which is Diaso, and then all that, they, they don't actually told us that they were actually mining. And then um, basically we have, everything that I'm saying is based on evidence because yeah. we had the drone footages and all that because if you're prospecting for gold, you do not send about 20, 30 excavators there, do you? You do not fell all the economic trees and all that. So when we went there, I have the report that was sent to the committee. Now, when the report came to the committee, after, I mean, after Kwekubaku has spoken to Prof and he sent them away, the committee sent me to go to CND Alaska's uh, site and then um, Apampamasu, which is the Kromo Forest, mm. in December 2018. Following that, I sent about 30 journalists. So this thing happened, happened to this country. It's not just politicians. I, I blame journalists, chiefs, Pastors and everyone else. Yeah, but but but, 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 but stick stick to the line. So, so, you, so no, I'm going. I'm, I'm, no, is it because I mentioned? No, 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 not at all. I mean, I, 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 because no. I mean, you, you I So, so I'm giving. I'm, I mean, I think that's... it's established that every, a lot of people are complicit in this. Matter. Exactly. There's so, a reason why the war is it's not very difficult. Won. It's yes, very difficult. Yes. So, so you're not following that. I sent thirty journalists, about thirty of them, including Erastus, to go and then see. Take a look at our yeah. first reserves. We are going to come out with a documentary so that the Ghanaian populace can see what is yeah. the difference. And we did a lot of documentaries on, on that. Actually. Yeah, but it was only Erastus who came out yes, to show it, out of the over 30 journalists. But so that you, you, you were actually, actually confirming that's for joy news. We stuck to the task. I'm talking about, um, okay. Yeah, let's okay. join you. So then in December 2018, yeah. 20, um, prior to that, 
crusading guide started bastardizing the IMCI. Okay? So you can see that from when the IMCI started working and the things that we're doing, we're given a mandate and the mandate was to stop illegal mining and then we go to a site and then we see people without the right documentation and we stop them. Then a newspaper belonging to somebody starts hitting them. Us. Yeah. And that person calls Professor for Bombardier and says that these people are not these by, by, by the way, for, for the avoidance of that, Mr. Baku has written extensively about this. And in his, in his write-up, he says, yes, he did two calls, which lasted four minutes, 25 seconds combined, mm -hmm. resulted in you kindly referring to Professor for Bombardier, mm -hmm. and you kindly agreeing to meet the two gentlemen, exactly. represent the company and the reference at 4 p.m., in your office, so okay. so, so that's so what you said. So I then, mean, after that, that, during my call to you, mm -hmm. I explained to you the purpose of the meeting. You are scheduled for the dem in your office. I told you that the two gentlemen, one of whom Don Donald, which you mm -hmm. mentioned, yes. was a personal friend, Simon. intended to brief you on the consistent mm -hmm. innovation of the company's concessions by Galamseas yeah. since October 2016. Exactly. I also informed you about their claims that you were trying to get cabinet to suspend, or. Uh, cabinet to spend or cancel their legitimate lease for large scale mining and to dispel rumors that their concession actually belonged to Ibrahim Mahama. I remember telling you that they would be presenting relevant and authentic documentation to defend their case. I also promised to send you reports and documents I had gathered on Galamsi operations since August 2016. Mm -hmm. so, and I personally was not present at the meeting, so he didn't come to the meeting. So, in other words, he's, what you said is what he's saying that he did. Exactly. I mean, so, but, but I haven't said anything. No, yeah. but then I'm saying that. So, crusading I mean, guide. What, what, I, what I wanted to say is, is to impute a certain, you know, ill motive to the call. He was calling to, says, he was called a sick piece of it. Are you saying that I am impugning? Um, no, I'm just saying that for the you know, people listening. Yeah, uh, but I'm just giving you chronology. chronology yes, yes so, so of just, just to say that it tallies yes. with what you said. Actually, exactly. So, and then 2018, I'm asked to go there. Yeah. And then February 2019, um, um, the Amas documentary comes out. Yeah. Okay. Now, when we went there, see, um, Heritage Imperial, we went there on the 10th of December. Mm -hmm. 11th of December, that's when they applied for EPA. So they didn't have the required documentation they did not have to EPA. be where they were yes. and what they were doing. They did not have EPA okay. license. So that, that is a corroboration of what from Paul Boateng had said in this report, is it not? As far exactly. as the, the companies, this company is concerned. Exactly. That they were actually acting mm -hmm. and operating illegally in the forest. Illegally, yes, okay. exactly. And if you're acting illegally as far as mining is concerned, then you are Galamse because it's illegal mining. Okay, you know? Galamse is not illegal mining, it's gather and sell, but illegal mining, you see, illegal mining. I get what you mean. There are <laughs> dynamics that are different. Exactly. But illegal but, mining is broad. Yeah, but if right? I see... But they were doing illegal mining in the forest. You Ken said something that we all need to look at it holistically. And I'm giving you an example of a, a person that we all know in this country calling and then a newspaper attacking the committee and then a phone call is placed and then we committee sends the secretary to go there we see that they are actually mining illegally mm -hmm. the day on the 10th of december that we raided that concession then they apply for epa on the 11th mm -hmm. subsequent to that epa writes to them and find them twelve thousand dollars so they were actually fined yes they were fined by epa everything i have a report on that so all i'm saying is that to do the Galamsey menace, menace, it's not just the government. You understand? There are civil servants, public officers, and all that, because all of us must actually change our attitude mm. um, in this country. But I need to ask you before I bring Ken in on the point that we left off on. Mm. You, are the, you were the secretary. Yeah. Mo Barton was the chair. Mm. Now, as far as these two companies are concerned, and they were central, because they were mentioned in terms yeah. of the work that they did in destroying the environment, you corroborate the from Pombatan report. But so when you not all of it. Not all of it. I'm, I'm am I isolating and the just, timing of it. I'm isolating just that okay. bit and the time you corroborate. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And yet when you hear the president say, quote, in the statement that was issued recently mm. on the back of the revelations, that not a single piece of evidence was adduced or presented to enable the claims to be properly investigated. No, no, it's it, it, then the, the presidency is talking about the people that have been named. No, I'm, but he's talking about the report. Right? I mean, at least you're saying that for these two companies, and that's why I isolated them. Yes. Because a lot of the, the personal and name mentioning, exactly. it hasn't been proven. Yes. Okay? So I don't want to go there. Exactly. Like people's reputation has exactly. But I'm, you're saying here that there, there's documentation to actually prove, at least, at least for, for these two companies, yes. they were engaged in something that wasn't. But legal. this company doesn't come from the presidency. 
I know, but my point uh -huh. is that at least for these two companies, mm -hmm. the owners yes. and those who are behind it yes. should have been prosecuted. Is that, is that your conclusion? So you, no, but let's not. You are saying that the presidency is saying that the evidence what, that wasn't was, enough. Okay. So I'm. But I, you, you're saying there's no, enough no. evidence at least for evidence, this com evidence, company evidence. No, you, no, for, you to, for, you to, for you to nail them, no. at least start a prosecution. And I'll still go back to what you said. So the presidency is saying that the people that you have named that I to Galam say, there's, there's no evidence what... And then in my statement, I said that I was not privy to the conversation between Prof. Ed Gabi and the other five or yeah. four that he mentioned. That, that's why I say that I don't want everyone to go to the individuals. Yes. Because as the individuals, mm -hmm. it is from Prof. Barton's word okay, against, against theirs. Yes. So that's why I'm, I'm staying off that yes. now yes. until it's investigated. Yes. But I'm talking about what you have corroborated. Yes. About the comp the two these two companies. And that company I mentioned that the company was fined twelve thousand dollars. So, so, so that, that, in fact, that strengthens my question to you. Yes. That at least on the ev on that evidence, why haven't we seen a prosecution of these two companies and those behind it? That's not for, for me to answer. Okay. But then the, the, the um Are you those, disappointed that, that hasn't happened? No, no, no. Least? Can I can I finish? Those agencies, EPAs they are creation of parliament. And they have the rules and regulations. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if they were able, they, were, they went ahead and find them twelve thousand dollars. Then maybe it falls within the confines of their rules and regulations. Sure. Okay, so all I'm saying is that our institutions to work should work. And the presidency, and let me reiterate on that, the presidency is saying that evidence as to who and who is doing calamity that you need to prefer. But my point is that those companies and journalists saying that these people are my friends, where you say there are documents to support that. And we know Kukuba in this country, he comes out with documents. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 and then what I, what I have here, no, what I have here, I've given you dates. Yeah. So the time that he was asking them to go and see from, couldn't he have checked those documents? Okay, stay with me. Um, let me bring in... And then, and then further to that, then later along the line, I heard him say that there was a judgment that looming of $15 million pertaining to these same companies. Then yeah. Attorney General has to go and then at what? But he became a subject in court. Exactly. The so and those so are, look at the events. And the dates that I'm giving you, then we need to look at that. Then it's not just the government alone. No, I, I mean, you, you've up. made the point about collective. But let me yes. bring in um, Ken. So when I, I, I put that statement that was issued back to you, which I was asking him, at least it corroborates the issue with, the, with these two companies. And, and Ken, you followed us. You watched the documentary. It's, it's pretty horrific. So when the president says in response to everything that we've heard, that no single piece of evidence was adduced or presented to enable the claims to be properly investigated, you agree with him? I'm not, I, I, you know, I do, I do not. You know, I, 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 I do not at all. You see, um, the, the point about it, the issues about people who being made, I, I'm not too sure they are the major part of this particular report that I've been issued. You know, they're at, they're, they're in that report, uh, the professor mentions the fact that um, a cabinet directive that was given was completely flouted. Yeah. Who are the people who are flouting this? You know, this is a committee that the president himself formed and, you know, he, he, you know, inaugurated. And for this particular committee again, the minister talks about the fact that, you know, apart from two other ministers, the rest of them abandoned them. So the whole conversation about the governance of, uh, you know, around this thing, you know, it's, it's, it's something that really needs to be looked into. Who is it that is flouting a cabinet director? The, the work of the, uh, uh, the Forestry Commission. I can tell you, uh, as a matter of fact, when we're in the, we, were, we were investigating uh, this uh, company, uh, you know, that you're to Heritage Heri Area. Yes. You know, we wrote to the EPA. We wrote to Minerals Commission and all of that. Their EPA confirmed that they did not have a permit. You know, and, you know, the fact that they were doing mining it's even go and look at their lawsuit that they brought against uh, they brought against Erastus. In there, they did not talk about their exploratory activities. They talk about their mining activities. So these are people who, on the face of legal documents they've taken to court, are confessing, you know, to a crime because they don't have the EPA permits at the point where this issue had been uh, had been raised. And you see, and all of these things. What have we seen being done about them? So I would, you know, very respect, uh, humbly disagree that, you see, in the face of the, the gravity of the challenges that are, you know, before us, we should not be measuring the minors. 
you know, those issues can be dealt with when uh, an investigative body takes them up. But what are the things that the, the professor had said? Even currently as we speak in this country, we have the whistleblower's law. That even when you go and blow the whistle, you know, it need not be official. You might not have a transmitter letter accompanying that. You know, we will take that because of the gravity of it. Are we saying currently now that if somebody went to wrote a report to say that there were terrorists, you know, attacking at any point, we were not going to deal with it. We'll say, oh, no, it was not an official document. What these people are doing, these criminals were involved in it. And I agree with, you know, my brother Alex. You know, because even in that document, there's a, there's a journalist we've mentioned. He has even written a statement and that's all. There are a lot of people who are involved in it. But what we need to be seen to be doing is that those of us who are cloaked with the power who have to deal should be dealing with the issues that are, that are confronting us. And this is a grave thing that might take us all out. You remember today, you know, the, the, the statement that was made. It was the same professor at the launch of the, uh, the media coalition about his encounter in Cote d'Ivoire. If we are not too okay, we are still polluting the Cote d'Ivoire waters. That could bring some conflicts that we're not ready for, you know? And we're talking about, you know, we're not even accounting for billions of dollars. We are out there at the IMF begging, begging for three billion. Whilst gold is so, you see the gravity of the challenge that is confronting us. I would not think that, you know, the, the presidency should be saying that the document did not have a tra transmitter letter and all of that. I think we need to take it with a lot more seriousness and find ways of dealing with it and dealing with the people who are involved in this. Yeah, I mean, and you, you make a point. I want to track a certain chronology. You remember the president asked the CID to investigate a recent interview that um, Frimpon Boateng gave to GTV in which you allege that people at Jubilee House, the president knows about it. Apparently, he was referring, now we are wiser, right? He was referring to this report that the president had all along. Yes. But the president was interested, I mean the president, was interested in the CID investigating his claims when the presidency already had the document in which he had detailed, you know. We haven't seen a referral, for example, of this report to another agency for investigations, which hasn't happened. The president could have easily done a referral to see the special prosecutor. He could have done to charge, even a CID to say, investigate. But that hasn't happened. Does that surprise you? Well, you see, so again, we would want to give them the benefit of that to say we don't know. But those are the things that we would, would want to, be, to see. That when such, you know, because this is a report from what the professor said, that the chief, uh, chief of staff had asked, yes. uh, you know, that he do, he does. And he presented this report. So you would want to see some actions being taken. And, you know, uh, and you see, sometimes I, you look again, you know, so there's a statement from the presidency. I would want to separate it from the, from the president himself. The president sees it and says that some investigation to be done. And somebody from the presidency issues that particular statement. But we need to be seeing the president who has consistently said that he's ready to fight this thing, be a bit more forceful in dealing with this issue. Evans, are you surprised that, you know, since the Minister for Lands and Natural Resources referred to Akonta mining of being involved in an illegality, and I have seen ample evidence, and, and the same way as the Heritage Imperial, of the fact that what they were doing in the, uh, the, 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 the forest reserve was mining, and they did not have a plan permit to do that, and that is an illegality. That is a sin against the Minerals and Mining Act. What has happened? The CID is supposed to be looking into that. What has happened to that? The, the former DC or MC for Bosome Frel, who... With one of the best savings rates in America, banking with Capital One is the easiest decision in the history of decisions. Even easier than choosing Slash to be in your band. Next up for lead guitar. You're in. Cool. <laughs> yep, even easier than that. And with no fees or minimums on checking and savings accounts, is it even a decision? That's banking reimagined. What's in your wallet? Terms apply. See CapitalOne.com slash bank for details. Capital One and a member FDIC. Was caught on tape confessing to a crime. What has happened to that? You see, so we start going after the supposed big people, and it's not, and I agree with, you know, Mr. Bissu when he talks about it, it's not only people in government. Anybody who is involved in it, including Kenneth Ashiba, if I am found to be involved in it, 
So we start going to these, after these people, the fight is going to be difficult because the people on the ground see it and they know that the people who are buying the gold from them, who are, you know, uh, you know financing these things, are very highly connected people and we are not doing anything about them. So how dare us come back to them and come and ask them that why are you engaging in this particular, uh, you know, illegality? So I think it is important for all of us to decide we should draw the, a line in the sun and say at this particular point, we are going to go after everybody who's involved in it. My prescription, and I'm not a lawyer, is the fact that beyond all the special prosecutor that should be looking into it, strikes that should be looking into it, we should have a national independent body made up, you know, with bipartisan representation, with some professionals, with some CSOs, with even the media involved in that. But before we get into this, it is important that we can get the government to commit to say that when this committee that we have set up as a people come up with their report, we are not going to have a white paper issued to rubbish and we are going to implement it. I don't know what the legalities are. We should ensure that whatever committee or commission we set up does also not, does not then become uh, you know, burdened with the fact that because you've gone before the commission, you cannot be prosecuted. You know, so we need to clear all of these things and make sure that the systems that we've put in place are actually working because we are in a crisis. Mm. And, and, and to that point that Ken makes, why, and you have said, and he agrees with you, that so many people are involved in this, politicians, yes. etc., pastors, as you said, pastors, journalists, everybody, everybody is involved in <laughs> Why, if that's the case, mm-hmm. why haven't you seen prosecutions? Why haven't you seen the state throwing the book at people it, see, and getting people? Well, what it's is the evidence. problem? It's our attitude. If it's so obvious, yeah, but, why haven't we done that? You see, um, our society is such that one commits a crime, and then by the time the person is reported to the police station, somebody else calls the person that releases him. He's my, that's our attitude, you see. Because Ken is talking about prosecutions and all that. We will keep asking these questions to the point that one day we're going to ask that what is the name of God's father. I don't know if I'm making sense. Because the things that the laws for us to um, follow. But then it gets to the point that we set the laws aside and then use our own attitudes and behaviors to actually uh, maneuver. You see, um, I've mentioned Kwekubaku, the way things have gone. And Why do you keep mentioning because, Kwekubaku? Because, I mean, he because, hasn't done anything no, apart no, no, from Evans, somebody. I mean, I want, I want to you, you've mentioned Evans, that enough. Evans, right? I'm asking a very uh, substantive question. So if you allow, about, me, if you allow me to... No, finish. but you, we, we've, we've talked about that quite extensively. and we, I've read his statement on it. I think uh, we should, we should, we should no, let that be for now. Because, and let's focus uh, on the big... Uh, and that's what Ken was Evans. making. I agree with him. We shouldn't major on the minors. Let's it, focus on the substantive matters. So, so everybody so, agrees so, you see, that, they are, they, that there's a... But I'll still make my point. People, I'll still make my point. You know, because I Evans, I'll still make the point. You, you were, I, I if, want to tap into your expertise. I want to tap into your expertise. Uh-huh. When you were the secretary, yeah. right, you wrote a report. The attorney general was involved in some prosecutions. Yes. Why didn't these prosecutions see the light of day and, and lead to successful prosecution and, and convictions? I, I'm, I'm making a point. I mentioned the name, and I'll still reiterate. You see, if we're in a society and we're doing things like that, because I'm actually stating something that, if Kukubaku comes in and says that he has all the documents, and then various institutions in this country, okay, he's able to pin them down and say this is wrong, and then people actually, he speaks from the, that position of authority, that these things, we should also hold him responsible. Because no. from, no, K- can K- I is not an elected oh. officer, he's a journalist. I'm because asking you a question about in your capacity as a So you're defending chair. a fellow journalist. No, I'm not defending so a fellow journalist. I'm just making a point uh-huh. that he has no prosecutorial powers. So, regardless of what he says, it doesn't change the fact that, 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 that this government has the power to investigate. The president has chosen not to, not to follow through when people are known to be involved. But if you allow me to make a point, because there's something that I have to say. You see, if that person is able to talk about other things, why not this one? That's the point I'm trying to. So it's not about prosecution. No, no. But that's not the question I'm asking. I'm asking a separate question. Yeah, I mean, I, because yeah, I, I don't want it to get fixated on one person. I'm not fixated. I'm not. Being, I, I, you you appear to be very fixated. No, no, on no. That. You see, you let's, ask let's, me address, a let's address the bigger. Point. No, you ask me a question. Yes. If you allow me to, and then you leave the viewers to understand what I'm trying to say. Because I think we, I think to that point, no, no. I think we understand the point. No, you're no, you are, you're not. I mean, I think we understand the point. Let's address the bigger question I'm asking you. So you see, that's the way. 
we do things in this country, and then we jump at the back of people that we know, and then the truth is not said. Because if he's able to tell one the president to be careful when this Galamati expose came, and this is the very thing that we're talking about, these are the points I'm making. So if he allowed me, I would arrive there. Because when that matter came, he even told the president to be careful. Now let me move on. You see, to deal with this problem, mm -hmm. that's some of the problems that I'm, I'm trying to enumerate. What is the problem with the prosecutions? I want to prosecutions that. with that, for me, I'm not a prosecutor. Is it because the too many powerful political players and influential folks involved, and that's why the system is crippled when it comes to illegal mining? No, but it's our, our attitude. I mentioned it because that politician is there, that police officer is there, the special prosecutor, for example. Yeah, he's a friend of Anas. Okay. So when a matter goes there, he will try to deal with, deal with it in a way that would benefit the friend. And these things have been going on in this no, country. So that, I'm saying that, that, that's, that's not fair comment. I mean, they ask, oh, ask, for, the, ask for the special you prosecutor know, yeah. on, on this matter. You, you cannot say that. I, you know, the reason why what, what, that, my point <laughs> I'm making about fair comment is important. Mm. And we know that the special prosecutor has a case pending against yourself. And I've taken him to court. But yes. that's not the, so, see, so that's why, in your own interest, uh -huh. in your own interest, uh -huh. It's not a place you want to go in, in dealing with these matters because no. this is a subject of a but, court action. But, uh, I'm asking you, based on your experience uh -huh. with the interministerial committee, uh -huh. okay, what did you observe to be the challenges that prevented you, for example, from getting results? These, some of the examples and experiences are what I'm trying to say. In your, in your People topic. get it in the way of exactly. doing your job. So I'm giving examples, and then you are not allowing let me, me. Let me ask you. Let me, let me, but those examples also have to be fair, and I don't think that... And they, they are fair. Made, no, so what about the person that is being met? Because that's, fair comment. that's affected the progress let, of the IFC. Let, let me ask you something you said mm -hmm. to the police. Yeah. You told the police that Frimpon Boateng himself had associates mm -hmm. who were involved in illegal mining. Yeah. Today, the shroud has received a petition. Mm -hmm. The second part of the petition... So that's not from, from Pombo Atin as well, is it? You will not allow me to talk about somebody that has been appointed by the state. Yeah. But you want me to talk about from Pombo Atin? No, no, no. no we, I that's not fair. Listen, to <laughs> listen to the question I'm asking you. Listen to the question I'm asking you. Today, mm -hmm. shroud has received a report, a petition. Mm -hmm. And the second part of that petition has to do with that allegation that you made. Okay. You've made it on radio. You've yes. told it to me. Mm -hmm. What do you make of that petition that has gone to Shrine? And Shrine have told us that there's something they're going to investigate. They possibly will be inviting you. That's fine. Um, mm. Are you willing to cooperate with that investigation I'm based on ready, your pronouncement? I'm ever ready to cooperate, so long as it's, it's just in the interest of the country. You see, um, that statement in there, um, the CID should have that report, and then the NIV should have that report. I think this will inure to the benefit of this country. So I am ever ready wherever I'm called to, to go to. But you asked me a question... And then so you cooperate with Shraj in that investigation? I cooperated with a special prosecutor until now that I've taken them to court. So these are experiences that if we, you allow us to talk about... But we are talking enough. We yeah, have to spend when, the last 48 uh, minutes. Uh, but, I don't want to, I don't want to uh, individualize and personalize it. No, I'm talking I'm about not. the big issues. But, so so we've talked, we spent uh, a lot of time talking about it. And I don't want to personalize I, I told you <laughs> categorically <laughs> and, and, and repeatedly <laughs> that for the individuals... We don't, I don't want to major on that minor. But we, that's that's a good individual, individual, individual too, isn't it? That is why my question was about the Shrike probe and not what he had alleged. Because that's a big point. The Shrike uh, is investigating your uh -huh. allegation, which uh -huh. will lead possibly uh -huh. to a bigger outcome in terms of resolving this. Uh -huh. that's what asking so the ones I'm saying are also in the public domain. I've already stated them, so saying them here, yeah. it's actually trying to... I don't to want you to repeat them. I'm asking you about the Shrike's yeah, work. Evans. Trying to mention them is actually educating the public as to what the happenings, mm. so that we do not go back there. Yeah. So you allow me because if I if I allowed know, you and you are asking me, you are asking me about my experiences yeah. at the IMC, IM, and I'm saying I'm enumerating them to you that these are some of the challenges. You understand? For example, CND Alaska, um, which, which uh, we've talked about extensively, we have, and then and then the other. Do, do you believe mm. as it is now? Shraj has triggered investigations. I mean, not Shraj itself, but it was mm. a petition. The NDC also today mm -hmm. um, asked the special president to step in. Mm. The minority says they will ask for a bipartisan probe in parliament. Yes. Do you believe these three, if all of them kick in, mm -hmm. will help resolve the challenges that you were exposed to when you were the, the secretary? Or you believe that may not resolve no, the problem? Unless, of course, we all change our attitude. 
and stop shielding people. So, you, so you, if, if, okay. if that is going to happen and then we do it, it's going to be moot when we do not change our attitude and actually speak the truth that this person said this two years ago and we believed in that person and then that person, we see that person at fault today and we are not allowed to mention that person and we're not getting anywhere. Okay, you, so you believe that the parliamentary probe, the um, Shraj probe and possibly the special prosecutor probe may not get proper results? That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that, yes, they are going to do everything that they are supposed to do but if you and I do not change our attitude, we may not get the results. Because then it's going to come out, there's going to be reports, there's going to be recommendations, and that person or those people who are supposed to what, ensure that that recommendation is met um, will be compromised somewhere, and they'll have friends in there, and then cronies and all that, so they will, they will not see the light. Of it. You make an important point. Let me put that mm. to uh, Ken. Ken, I mean, beyond the no, no one to depersonalize it, but he makes a point that I think is worth interrogating, which is that... The reason why this fight has failed so far, there is a network of individuals in, across the board, really, who have persistently made it impossible, even for state agencies that really want to do this, to get something done. And then until that, is, that network is dismantled, you can't expect any real results um, from these three agencies. And to put that in a bigger context, the previous government under the, my good friend Inusa Fuseni started this war, they, they, they didn't quite succeed. This government had also started, they have failed. Is there something bigger about this, our entire society, maybe, that is making this war an impossible war to win? You see, uh, Ivan, uh, there's a reason why I am a believer in uh, what Professor Dai says, that leadership it's course. Everything else is a fact. What we need to, and go back and read my very first article that brought to bear uh, this, uh, uh, the media coalition. It is because leadership has failed us. You know, we are not going to expect, and unfortunately, let me bust uh, Mr. Bisu's bubble. We are all not going to change our, our, our attitude. But leadership would have to demonstrate, you know, that we really are committed to solving this problem. And even as I don't believe that if we, if we really wanted to solve this problem, we, can't, we cannot solve it. I think, I don't know, I, 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 I believe, even as you and I have been at this, and I'm pretty sure they've come at you in various ways and shapes. You know, that people who tell me every time, you know, stop talking about this, you know, you, you're putting yourself, you know, in danger and all of that. You get all of that. But we all need to realize that there's a higher calling that we are all called to. And I, I completely can hear Alex, Mr. Bishop, when he talks about that. You know, bear in mind, he's giving a chronology that shows that Anas's uh, investigation of him came when he went to a particular place. You know, so we need, that's the reason why we need to really investigate this and do it very openly. But I agree. Another thing that has to happen is that a lot more of us than just you and I and a few other people, Erastus and all, need to be committed to this particular cause. We need to start. And I think one of the things that we should do as a media coalition is to start also bringing several suits against people who have to act who are not acting, including companies like Akonta Mining, like uh, Heritage Imperial, like, uh, you know, uh, people, you know, uh, the Forestry Commission, people who have to act who are not acting. I think the time has come for all of us to decide that we need to push to make sure this thing happens. I, for me, I think the next election, we should be asking people concrete reads, what are the concrete things they are going to do to ensure that we deal with this. I think we should be going to the IMF and we should go into all these Adoma partners and asking them to also ask the government, what are you going to do about this? That if you have billions of dollars being whittled away, don't come to us asking for, uh, for patent from us. We need to make sure that we get the coalition of the willing, all of us putting pressure to ensure otherwise this thing is going to eat us up. And it is true. The criminal elements involved in this, there's a lot of money. They have a lot of resources. So they marshal all of that and they push that. And sometimes our political leaders become pawns. And if we allow them to become very strong, what they will do is that they will buy the entire system. Yeah, and, and then they will, and, be, and, they will start... And when know, CDD did the report, we found illicit... The illicit, you know, campaign financing flows. Part of it comes from 
illegal mining. And maybe that's a big part of the problem. But I need to ask you the point that you, you touched on earlier, that you, there's a sense that civil society itself has been pretty dormant on this subject. Even since this report came up, I, I bet you're possibly the, the sole civil society lone voice in the wilderness screaming on top of your voice on the back of this report. That must frustrate you. Well, I, I, sometimes I sit back and I think that this is a charge that we have to keep. And, um, you know, if you have some... But it is frustrating that, you know, we are not hearing people speak up as they ought to do. And I'm inviting the Catholic Bishops Conference. I'm inviting the Chief Imam. I'm inviting the uh, Christian Council, the Pentecostal Council, all of these bodies who really supported us, that the time has come, this is the right time, for us to ask, draw the line in the sun. And I think it's important. You know, we need a lot more media houses taking this document and actually going into them and making sure that we are focusing on getting change. The most important thing is that we need to get change. You know, we need to decide. You know, all these uh, uh, DCs, MCs who met the president and gave a promise. Is Galamse still happening in their com- in their country? And you've advocated district. that the president should make that part of their KPIs. If you don't deliver, exactly. you start them. Mm. The MPs. Is Galamse still happening in their constituencies? What are they doing? You know, the chiefs. You know, so I think that, uh, yes, civil society, and it's not only civil society, corporate Ghana needs to also get involved. And let's say that we all need to support ourselves. If we leave it to only the politicians, the civil servants and all of that, the power, the, you know, the, 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 the wealth that these people have, they will not be able to resolve it. Even if you remember, very early in this fight, there was a guy called Bronzy or something. He dared the president. We went to report to the then IGP, not this current one. You know what the police told us? They said, we should go and find Bronzy one and bring him to them. You know, these attitudes have to change. How is it that we know that chamfans have been declared illegal? About 50 kilometers, uh, 50 meters to the uh, um, Indian, uh, police uh, head, co- uh, head office, the police station. There's somebody manufacturing that there. Yeah. So what is happening? You need, so we need to start holding local leaders also accountable and say that there are yeah. things that you need to be doing. And sometimes I think we, 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 we you know, inadvertently just focus on only the politicians and allow and neglect of those who are actually after destroying the, like, yeah, but Charles, do you honestly believe this war will ever be won? Yes. Um, you, you believe uh, it will be won? Evans, you know, you, you mentioned that um, this government has failed. The government hasn't failed. In the fight against the no. government? Because they haven't? No. This government hasn't failed. Really? You know why? When... How many years do you have empirical evidence to support when Galamse started or the illegal mining started? It doesn't matter. The president. No, let, let's no. start from 2017. Okay. When the president said, "I'm putting my my presence on the line." So, today. so are you able to, I mean, um, just oppose it with the time previous government and say that within that our land size, maybe 40,000 hectares of land was destroyed, and then in this government, 60,000. Then in this government, it's 80,000. Then we're having a conversation. No, but I'm not doing a comparison. I'm talking about... No, it's not about comparison. No, you're, no, no. you're saying that it's filled, so yes. you need to peg it against something. No, not, you don't have to. You, you, the president <laughs> set his own target, mm-hmm. which is he's going to deal with this problem, and he's putting his own presence in the line. So okay. you judge him by that. So if, As we speak tonight, mm-hmm. he hasn't achieved that objective. Were they t- timelines? Say again? Were there timelines? No, he gave himself his own timeline. He's put no, his presidency no. on the line. To deal with the matter. Yes. Okay. And, he, and, he had and that was a figure term. of speech, right? It wasn't. It was very specific. In his first term, he failed it, it to deliver that. speech. In his first term, he failed to deliver that. In his second term, we're having this conversation. No, that, yeah. that was a figure of speech, wasn't it? When they say figure of speech, what do you mean? That I'm going to put my presidency... No, it wasn't a figure of speech. He was clear that so, if, I, if I have to lose elections because of this. That's what he meant. It was so very specific. It, it doesn't he mean will that. do it so, to I mean, win the war. Okay, let's carry on. But it's a, uh, for me, it was a figure of speech, meaning that I want to deal with this matter. Yeah, which, so, has, which hasn't happened. No. So, if, I mean, if, if you allow me to finish a sentence, then, I mean, mm. I'll be making some sense. You know what I mean? So, what I'm trying to say is that there, there's no empirical evidence saying that Kalam C, okay, has been there for 10 years in one country, so dealing with it would be 15 years. 
What the president did was that I did I need to deal with this problem. So he formed an interministerial committee. A mandate was given. So within the mandate, and let's the committee take, failed. No. So yes, So let me finish. <laughs> so within the mandate, what was the mandate of the committee? What did the committee did do? Did you deliver on your mandate? Yes, we did. Verification of licenses because he the two. So what, one why is the committee not there again? So if you allow me to... No, I mean, it's a simple so question. I'm, so I'm talking about mandates now. Yes. Okay, so when I get to the mandate and I conclude, then you can ask me questions, all right? So what I'm trying to say is that, <laughs> now, verification of licenses. Here, too, when we came into power, one license owns about five concessions. Mm. That was cleaned, okay? 4,000 miners were trained in um, 4,500. And then there was community, community mining. mining. So community mining, you see, it's not, it's not so good. But it was a starting point. So all the parameters that have been put there, we, you and I, have to monitor it and ensure that it is. Mm. And that is why we're having this conversation I put today. It to you, I put it to you fundamentally. Yeah. Your job was to stop illegal mining. No, no. Our job was, was to what, sanitize, no, sanitize and restructure the artisanal and small-scale mining sector. True. So, but, but to stop Galamse. It, it, it was a primary one. No, primary it's, expectation was uh, it's a do process. all that. No, no. It's that a, will lead to... One, a process the, that would lead the stability to... of the water will improve. No, I, I was a secretary, so as we speak, it appears tonight, that you were my deputy secretary. Then. No, I mean, so I'm giving you the mandate. <laughs> I, 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 I get the mandate that was written, but if all that, so do you know the mandate? Can you tell your viewers the mandate now? To... No, Evans, can you tell the viewers your mandate that's now? It, prim -pom, so but, I, I have it here, I can prim -pom, tell you. Prim -pom, like, forget about uh -huh. my, my word. From Pom mm -hmm. was it, your boss, yes, in his report, he says you, you guys that that in terms of illegal mining. Mm -hmm. You didn't achieve that objective. Where did he say that? Th that's what we've been talking about no, for the no, last no, one hour. This is a report. I said most of the things that he said in there were right. If I sit here and I say that they're wrong, then I do not.